My name is Catherine Espayat. I'm a professor at Boston University. And today I'm going to talk to you about my research, which is planet formation. I'm interested in trying to answer the question, how do planets form? We know that there are lots of planets out there. Many have been detected, many will be detected. But where did all these planets come from? Where did our Earth come from? Ideally, if we wanted to understand where we came from, where Earth came from, we would jump in a time machine and go back in time and see the sun as it was forming. But we can't do that. If we want to get an idea of how our solar system formed, we have to look at other stars in our galaxy that are in their infancy, that are just starting off their lives and forming right now. I study stars that are about a million years old, so very young stars that are still forming. And around these stars, uh, you can find protoplanetary disks. These are disks of dust and gas. And what we think happens is that the dust grains in these disks collide with one another, they stick and they grow, and they get bigger and bigger until they form the cores of planets. In some cases, the core is large enough that can accrete the gas that's around itself in the disk, forming giant planets. And once we have these young planets in these protoplanetary disks, they should be accreting and sweeping out the material around themselves in the disk. So they should leave behind a cleared out region in the disk. And we see evidence of these gaps in these disks around young stars. So when we detect these gaps, we infer that there should be a planet in the gap clearing out the material and forming that gap. And so far, we've detected one young planet forming within one of these gaps in the disk around a star surrounding lit calcium 15. Here's an image that was taken of lit calcium 15 so the image on the left, you see a ring of material in light gray. That's the disk and that's the gap in the disk. And within the gap in the disk, you see three points of light. These are infrared detections of possible protoplanets within this cavity. The interesting thing is lit calcium 15b was detected in H-alpha. The H-alpha is an emission line that traces accretion. So what this is telling us is that the protoplanet is surrounded by its own little circumplanetary disk, and that material is accreting from that disk onto the planet, so the planet is still growing. And we see evidence for circumplanetary disks when we look at our own solar system. So if you look at Saturn, you see that it has these big beautiful rings. That's evidence that probably in its when it was forming, it had a, a disk around itself. And also Jupiter, if you look at the moons of Jupiter, you'll see that they're close to a planar orbit, which is also evidence that Jupiter in its past could have had a circumplanetary disk around it. So we think that we see evidence of a circumplanetary disk around the calcium 15b. So since Jupiter has moons and Saturn has moons, and the calcium 15 is likely a uh, a gas giant planet like Jupiter, it can probably at some point in, in its future be forming moons around itself from the remnants of this circumplanetary disk once the planet has formed. The prospects for detecting even more of these gaps and disks is very high. The ALMA interferometer in Chile is currently operational and is taking many images of disks and also the next generation of 30 meter class telescopes is really going to open up this field and allow for the possibility of detecting um, Earth-sized planets closer to the star. If you want to learn more about the research being done in my group at Boston University, please check out the link below. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in learning more, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you and until next time. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> You know, like what I think sounds like energetic is like, <laughs> like you need some coffee. <laughs>